We take a moment from the New Year messages and celebrations for a review of some of the events that shaped governance in 2021. And tonight, our focus is on the National Assembly. Now, for keen observers of the federal legislature, 2021 was a mixed bag of highs and lows. Now, while some analysts commend the lawmakers for the passage of the Petroleum Industry Bill and the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, Others argue that they failed to effectively play their role, that is, their constitutional role of checking the executive and providing effective oversight for the other arms of government. Well, let's dive deeper into this with our National Assembly correspondent, Linda Akibe, who joins us live from the nation's capital, Abuja. Well, Linda, first, a happy new year to you. But what were the defining moments for the legislature in 2021? Thank you, Kayode, and Happy New Year to you too. Now, there were several defining moments in the National Assembly in 2021. Two very important ones, like we said, what you read are the passage of the Petroleum Industry Bill and the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. The PIB, which is expected to overhaul and transform the oil and gas sector, had been through different stages in the National Assembly for more than a decade. So it was a relief that the Ninth Assembly was able to pass the bill and President Buhari gave his assent, so it is now a law. Then we cannot forget the passage of the Electoral Act Amendment Bill and the drama and tension passing that legislation caused in the National Assembly because of the issues of electronic transmission of results and mode of party primaries. Now, the bill is not a law yet because President Buhari has declined assent, so it, there's still uncertainty as to the fate of that bill and if it can be passed and ascended to on time to kickstart preparations for the 2023 general elections. To the low points this year, one of them is the slow pace of work on the Constitutional Amendment Bill. By now, the report from the bill ought to have been brought before lawmakers and voted for before sending to the State Houses of Assembly. So let's take a look at this report, which will give more highlights on the National Assembly in 2021. When we look at the year 2021 in the National Assembly, two major issues defined Parliament. The enactment of the Petroleum Industry Bill and the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Now, these two pieces of legislation caused huge disagreements in both chambers of the National Assembly and caused heated discussions in the public space. The Petroleum Industry Bill lingered in the National Assembly for more than a decade. The Ninth Assembly broke the jinx for the passage of the bill and eventual assent by President Buhari. However, it was indeed a tumultuous journey for the legislation in 2021. What I'm asking for. The bone of contention in the PIB was a percentage fixed for developing host communities to be derived from the operating cost of oil companies. The two chambers of a National Assembly passed the PIB with the Senate making a provision of 3% of operating cost of oil companies for host communities, while the House passed 5%. In the harmonized report, the 3% for host communities was adopted to the vexation of Niger Delta lawmakers in both chambers and interest groups. On August the 16th, 2021, President Buhari signed the Petroleum Industry Bill into law and has since forwarded amendments of the legislation to the National Assembly. But no legislation caused as much disagreement in Parliament and sparked discussions across the country in 2021 as the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. The bill is intended to sanitize Nigeria's electoral processes. Two clauses in the bill ended up becoming the most contentious, electronic transmission of results and method of party primaries. The passage of the legislation was, however, preceded by disagreement among lawmakers over Section 52.3 of the bill dealing with electronic transmission of results. This clause caused a sharp split among lawmakers from the ruling party and the opposition, and a division was called the first in the Ninth Assembly. Therefore, vote yes to electronic transmission of results, because that is what Nigerians want. I, I vote no just to allow INEC to do the best job for Nigeria. Thank you. The opposition was defeated and the Senate amended the clause empowering the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, and the National Assembly to determine the use of electronic transmission during elections. <laughs> Lawmakers and House of Reps almost came to blows debating Section 523, but the House eventually gave INEC the power to determine the method of transmission of election results. My name. 
On the defense... Surprisingly, on October the 12th, the Senate bowed to public pressure and rescinded its earlier decision on electronic transmission, thereby giving electoral body INEC the power to determine the method. Both houses also adopted direct primaries for selecting candidates by political parties. This set them against governors who are in support of indirect primaries. And this ultimately reached a crescendo with President Buhari declining assent on the bill, leaving the nation uncertain as to the future of this all-important legislation. The Senate also rejected the nomination of Loretta Onoche as INEC National Commissioner representing Delta State for contravening federal character principles. The gender equality bill also suffered a setback in the upper chamber, as some lawmakers said it offends their religious beliefs. The National Assembly also approved the loan request from President Buhari running into trillions of Naira, a situation which unsettled some Nigerians. You have to listen. It's a fact. You represent the people. Even if it means having a public hearing for those who are applying for this loan to come and speak about it. The House of Representatives devoted a huge amount of time during the year to discuss the security crisis in the country. My colleague Terry Ikumi tells us more from the House. You're absolutely correct, Linda. There was hardly a plenary day without the issue of insecurity. And to take it a step further, the House organized a special national summit on security, and that report has been submitted to the President. The House of Representatives passed bills to establish development commissions in all regions of the country. The House also passed the Climate Change Bill, as well as the Controversial Infectious Diseases Bill, which stakeholders had condemned during the public hearing last year. The passage of the bill came about 17 months after the conclusion of the public hearing. Before its passage on the 21st of December 2021, here's what the Speaker had to say. Our good faith efforts were willfully mis mischaracterized by individuals who saw the moment as an opportunity to score cheap political points and earn the passing accolades of the ignorant and misinformed. The Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives came under fire for refusing to accept a petition from a group of Nigerians in diaspora. Towards the end of 2021, the House began investigating the activities of real estate developers in the country, following numerous petitions from Nigerians alleging fraud. However, the efficacy of these investigations by the National Assembly is being questioned. Several committee legislative investigations were, were started and uh, Nigerians were interested in these investigations, but eventually uh, nothing came out of these investigations as far as informing the public about the outcomes of these uh, several investigations. Stepping into an election year, it is expected that lawmakers will not abandon their primary responsibility of lawmaking to focus on politics. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. Well, quite an intriguing year indeed for the legislature. But Linda, 2021 over and done with. Briefly, what does the year 2022 hold for the National Assembly? Yeah, thank you, Coyote. In 2022, we would like to see the National Assembly take more seriously the amendment of the 1999 Constitution and address the issues of devolution of powers, fiscal federalism and method of policing, to name just a few, which many Nigerians want attention to be given to. And of course, the Electoral Act Amendment Bill needs to be passed and signed into law quickly to allow INEC and even political parties prepare for the elections. We want more scrutiny on loan requests sent by the president and also for the legislature to be more efficient in oversighting other arms of government. Well, thanks, Linda, our National Assembly correspondent. Let's now bring you some more analysis on the National Assembly's performance in the last year with Mr. O.K. Apia, who is the founder of Order Paper Nigeria, joins us live from our Abuja studio. Well, Mr. Apia, a lot has been said about the passage of the PIB and Electoral Act Amendment Bill, but uh, would you say the National Assembly did well in enacting other impactful legislations in 2021? And by the way, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you, Coyote. Best wishes for 2022. Uh, well, um, let me quickly add that um, another very impactful legislation passed by the National Assembly in 2021 is the Sam Onwebu Climate Change Bill, which is now an act of parliament. Uh, that very impactful piece of legislation is intergenerational, and the, 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 the import of that law as we have it currently is beyond uh, it's not given 
It's not getting adequate attention. Perhaps because the PIB, which is now PIA, has stalled for so long, it has taken a lot of attention, perhaps also because the electoral bill uh, is also very important to uh, the reform of the, you know, the political process, especially the electoral uh, jurisdiction, jurisdiction of this country. So we have not quite, uh, we tend not to give attention to the very important nature of the Climate Change Act as we have it. Uh, having said that, I, I think that the National Assembly uh, deserves some bit of commendation in certain areas, uh, but we must also call attention to areas where they have fallen short of public expectations. And this, like you know, uh, Linda mentioned in, earlier, relates very hugely around um, the performance of oversight functions. We haven't seen a lot of, um, you know, um, effective and effectual oversight uh, performance by the National Assembly. And the, you know, examples abound. Uh, she mentioned the issue of debt, the rising debts. You know, we keep seeing approvers and approvers of all requests, virtually all requests made by Mr. President on the issue of loans and, you know, borrowings have been approved. And, expeditiously so by the National Assembly. Even the way we have lapses, we, we've seen members, certain members of the National Assembly call attention to uh, issues around exclusion and lack of details of what these monies will be used for, but we still see the approvers anyways. You know, so there is, a, there is, is you know, concern about, you know, performance of oversight in that regard. Um, we, we have been told that, well, the National Assembly is more interested in building and sustaining a cordial, on collaborative relationship with the executive, that is fine. I've always made the point, nobody's asking for fisticuffs, but we are saying to the National Assembly, we have to have the interests, the generality of the national interest above regime security, above regime stability, and above elite interests, which is the way I can define uh, uh, the collaboration that they like to trump And I think that um, if that is done, we will see more of national interest, issues that bother constituents and Nigerians uh, be on the front bone. I give you another example, the Twitter ban, or what is popularly known as Twitter ban, the suspension of Twitter, uh, the micro-blogging site in this country is well over six months. And you know, it appears that we don't have a national assembly. This is an issue that borders and concerns Nigerians, their livelihoods, their means of communication, it relates to freedom of expression and all of that. And you just, you know, basically abandon your function of checks and balances over the executive and you let this very important, you know, human rights, economic issue uh, just uh, remain, Nigerians are deprived, right. you know, so the National Assembly needs to be told in clear terms that yes, we want collaboration. Mm -hmm. We want uh, both arms of government to coordinate effectively, but we also want this to be done effectively in the national interests. It's right. not so, about the interest of the presidency or the interest mm -hmm. of the occupant of the presidency. Well, it's about Edgar, the national interest. And if this is done... Uh, we're winding down in about a minute. I know there's so much to say on this. And there will always be questions about whether or not the National Assembly did enough uh, to shake off uh, that rubber stamp uh, tag that some have used to describe it. But on a final note, we're entering a new year. Uh, what would you want to see uh, of the National Assembly in this new year? If you could do that in 30 seconds. The National Assembly needs to give speedy attention to the constitutional amendment base that it has conducted public hearings on for over, uh, well over six months. Uh, whatever the delay is, they must put some speed to that process. The National Assembly also needs to quickly pass the fiscal responsibility bill that has also been on the table for much of the Ninth National Assembly. Uh, this bill is important because it helps in an era that we're all complaining about revenue shortages and crisis. Uh, this bill will help, you know, government show up its revenue base. It will also help in the anti-corruption, in prosecuting the anti-corruption fight of this government. A constitutional amendment is very key because, you know, like Linda mentioned earlier, there are a couple of bills that will help us to resolve lots of the issues around security, around fiscal federalism, around empowering and empowerment of the Office of the 
the Auditor General around local government reforms, several of them that I think that a lot of my attention should be given to speedily because mm -hmm. there is no time. We are going to be going into the election here and uh, National Assembly members would, of course, naturally be distracted. They would now be focused more on politics. So right. um, in the early days of 2022, we'd like to see attention given to the constitutional amendment process, to right. the passage of the fiscal responsibility beyond all other key legislations uh, that are lying on uh, in the chambers of both uh, of the National Assembly. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you on the performance of the National Assembly on this New Year's Day, Mr. O.K. Apia, who is a founder of the Paper Nigeria. Thank you for your time. Thank you.